Bhutan, a country with about 650,000 people, tucked away in the north part of India, one of the most beautiful countries in the world and a country with a reputation for having some of the happiest people in the world. I'm very pleased to be able to speak to Mr. Kip Chu Chering, the Chief Executive Officer of one of the larger banks in Bhutan, the Bhutan National Bank. And I would like him to give us a sense of how financial intermediation is taking place in Bhutan. Thank you very much for speaking to us, Mr. Kip Chu. Give us a sense of Bhutan as a country um, and the economic profile of the country. Yes, Bhutan is uh, a very small country with a population size of uh, 650,000 and it's located in between the two most populous uh, countries that is uh, namely the India towards the south and to the north is the China. About 80% uh, of the population still live on agriculture. But Bhutan is fast developing in terms of uh, because of the natural resources like hydropower is one of the biggest resources that Bhutan has and we are harnessing that for the you know power hungry the nations like India where we can sell our power to the to India at a very cheap rate and therefore there is also need for power in Bangladesh Nepal and even to the north or in China Tibet which is also in need of uh, power. Bhutan is also famous for tourism. What, to what extent is tourism uh, an important part of the economy? One is uh, Bhutan is uh, you know, culturally very lively. We are, uh, in terms of uh, environment also, Bhutan is undisturbed. And Bhutan has uh, you know, the, one of the best uh, scenic beauties in terms of the high mountains, the valleys, the people, the religion, culture, everything is very lively there. And people find Bhutan as, uh, as the last Shangri-La in the world. Tell us a little bit about your bank and how close you are with the local community. What do you do and what is your business profile? In my bank has established uh, last uh, in the beginning of the 13th years. It's in the 13th year of operation. And prior to that, there was only one bank, the state-owned bank. And uh, since during the last uh, 13 years, my bank has been actively involved into the, the banking and also the socio-economic development of the country. We have today become virtually become the, uh, the bank in the country in terms of services, in terms of uh, credit to assets that we have lent out to the public and in terms of even mobilization of, of savings we are done, done very well and we are almost in you know uh, almost to the point of that we are number one now and in terms of technology also we are much ahead of the rest of the banks and uh, right now we have uh, three uh, four banks in but uh, we are the second in terms of uh, uh, the size, but uh, very soon we are hoping to become the number one. What does it take to become number one? If there's a population of 600,000, um, you probably have everyone within walking range of each other. So everything depends on the services. The faster and better services you can, the clients, once you become your clients and they will not go away, to the other banks and in fact uh, other the newer clients would like to bank with us because of our reputation how, how many people how many people in bhutan have bank accounts see in terms of i think uh, bankable population i think uh, we have very little bankable population maybe uh, even maybe half the population still does not have uh, accounts but that is because of the remoteness of the area the locations are uh, you know, the villages and are sparse and they are not concentrated into the valleys. So people are uh, all over the place and that's why it is not for easy for everybody to have an account. 
but with the modernization i think uh, with the internet banking we have the uh, mobile banking and you have the name it you know atms and everything is uh, coming into place how many people in bhutan are above or below the poverty line that is a very relative term but in bhutan if you That's look correct. at the if you look at the uh, the uh, per capita income within the south region probably we are the highest we have uh, you know 1350 dollars and uh, the gdp growth is uh, we are growing at the rate of 8 to 9% every year so 1300 dollars per per capita income makes them technically all bankable in a in a sense yeah, but if that, you can reach them, basically. Yes, it is. Uh, but but that's again, you know, the distribution of wealth. Then uh, the distribution of income itself. It is, it's uh, not even. It's not even the sense that, uh, you know, the population is concentrated in certain areas. And it is, uh, the, there are a lot of people who are not reachable in terms of uh, education in terms of employment opportunities and uh, in terms of uh, even if they are educated they cannot get a uh, job right away or you know so we have problems like uh, rural urban migration and all this ha are happening because of uh, the kind of opportunities that is being made available and uh, we have uh, enormous amount of uh, the immigrants who are working for the uh, for the country like uh, from india or even from Bangladesh, people come to work in Bhutan. So what is your, the profile of your asset base? How much of your business is actually banking and how much of it is investments and other things? See, the investment opportunities in Bhutan are mostly, mostly on the retail banking. And we, have, we don't have much of uh, the treasury assets are very little. And we have more of a retail banking like mortgage loans, the uh, we have the industrial loans the personal loans we have business loans and uh, all sort of these these businesses are thriving very well and the growth in terms of those loans are growing at the rate of uh, almost 30 percent every year and the demand for uh, for the credit is growing every year if the credit is growing on the back of mortgages you're saying to me that the bankable assets in Bhutan are pretty stable and they, um, they, they can grow, basically. Yes, we are growing very steadily and uh, we are growing at the not less than 20% uh, every year. So there were times even uh, my bank was growing about 70 to 80%, both in terms of uh, the deposits and in terms of credit. Bhutan is in a phase of rapid investment in infrastructure at this point in time. Right, right. And that is why your bank um, has been able to record a very fast pace of growth as a yes, result. Yes, yes. Uh, what is the economic outlook of Bhutan for the foreseeable future? So we have a huge potential for hydropower that is up to 30,000 megawatt. And 30,000 megawatt project for a country size of uh, 650,000. This enormous potential for uh, you know the per capita income to grow on every project that is coming into streamline will uh, make our you know the income grow by seven to eight hundred dollars per 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 person. So that has an enormous potential for the country like Bhutan and. Moreover, we have the, the potential for uh, tourism, which is one of the biggest uh, the revenue generation for the country now. And the future, the Bhutan government wants to harness this in a big way. So I think uh, the potential for Bhutan is going to be very, very high. Keep to sharing. Thank you very much for giving us a much. good glimpse of a wonderful country. And Thank you. we look forward to being able to visit it sometime. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh,